All right, real quick video on how to make simple wine at home. So the grape juice uh, method is what I've always used and uh, you can always mash your own grapes or mash your own fruit. But uh, there's certain grape juice you can buy that is perfect for making wine. It has to have no um, preservatives other than ascorbic acid. So you see on the ingredients here, it's 100% it's, uh, juice. It has to be 100% juice for it to turn out right. Then you have your filtered grape juice, great, uh, just ascorbic acid for the, that's just a natural uh, preservative of the vitamin C. That way the uh, yeast doesn't, uh, that doesn't kill the yeast, because some of these juices will have um, preservatives that'll kill the yeast and it'll taste like rubber bands and smell like rubber bands and just be nasty and you won't get any good alcohol content or anything out of it. So basically, the recipe I've always followed to make a dry red, uh, just grape wine, um, about, about a pound of sugar per gallon of juice. So obviously there's already sugar in the juice, then you want to add a pound of sugar on top of that. Um, another thing also, obviously, you can do, or what you should do, is uh, mix a little water with the sugar. So I have about a pound of sugar in here. You want to mix it in water. Don't heat it up. Just mix it till it dissolves. Because if you heat it up, then you're going to have to let it cool down or else it'll kill the yeast. Because eventually you're going to mix the yeast and everything. And if the water's too hot from you heating it up, it'll, it'll destroy the yeast. So we're going to dissolve this sugar until it's just a real syrupy, almost like corn syrup, but water. You can also use honey, um, other types of uh, natural sugars. But uh, for today, we're just using regular granulated table sugar. This is all pretty much dissolved. Uh, basically, how the process works is you add a packet of yeast in. One packet's good up to five gallons. You can use bread yeast, but I go through, a, I use Red Star. This yeast right here, it seems to do the best, doesn't have any funky taste or anything. But basically, you can either one sprinkle, once you pour everything together, which I'll show you, you can either sprinkle the yeast on top or you can hydrate it. I personally hydrate it, it kind of activates it and gets it going. So, ideally, you can get real cheap on Amazon, a food grade bucket. Um, don't use the regular buckets like from Home Depot or anything because they, they can contain uh, some chemicals that you really don't want in there. So basically what we're going to do is we're just going to pour the grape juice directly in here, pour the sugar solution directly in there, pour the yeast in, and then I'll put a lid on with an airlock, which I'll show you what that is. And you just let it sit for a couple weeks. And basically, um, you... You can you, what you need to use is a siphon, um, which I need to wash here. But uh, just a regular gravity siphon, or you could even get a, just a piece of tubing. And um, after a couple weeks, after this has been sitting in here with an airlock, airtight. Uh, the reason for the airlock is it lets air out, but it won't let air in. So it'll uh, it'll still keep it airtight, and it'll bubble. It'll that airlock has water in it, so and then it has like a J trap, which I'll show you here in a second. So it lets, once the pressure builds up from the uh, yeast, for, or from the fermentation, the pressure builds up. It lets the gases out, but it doesn't let anything in because the water traps it. Um, so, again, keeps it airtight. And uh, there's going to be sediment that sinks to the bottom of the bucket. And after about a week or two, uh, once the fermentation starts slowing down, you'll want to use a siphon to move this into another bucket. Or you can reuse these containers. Just rinse them out when... Um, once you pour them, everything out, rinse them out, and just store them away. You can pour this back into the containers temporarily, rinse the sludge out, and then pour those back in for about another week or two, and then your wine will be ready. Um, you can use a hydrometer, which is a uh, basically to measure the density um, and the gravity of your wine. Uh, I don't use them anymore. I know my wine usually yields between 14 and 16 percent uh, alcohol, but uh, with this method. But hydrometer, at least the one that I used before, you would drop it in, the liquid at first, you write down the number that it shows, and then when you think you're done or when the fermentation's done, you drop it in again, and then uh, you measure that number and subtract the difference, and that would be your percent of alcohol. But uh, let's go ahead and mix all this together. So, again, just regular organic grape juice is what we're pouring in here. Make sure your uh, bucket's sterilize. If you use soap and water, you just have to rinse the heck out of it to get all the soap out. Uh, they do make sanitizing solutions that um, 
are easy to rinse out. But uh, I used a sanitizing solution just so I didn't have any residual soap, uh, like the film, left over. So we're only making basically a gallon of this today. So, sugar solution is dissolved. It wasn't heated up. We're going to pour that in. See, there's really nothing left. It's nice and dissolved. And then, all I'm going to do is sprinkle the yeast. Or, uh, I'm going to hydrate the yeast. Pour it in there. We'll put the lid with the airlock on. That's it for the first part. So, to hydrate the yeast, I always use a smaller container. Um, just so I can pour a little bit of lukewarm water in it. If the water's too hot, it's going to end up killing your yeast or making it not if it not work as efficient. Um, you just want it almost just room temperature or somewhere around there. Just a little bit of water is all you need. And you basically just stir that up, get it nice and dissolved. This is the way I prefer because it just seems to work better and work faster. Again, you can just sprinkle the yeast right on top of the liquid there, but this always works better for me. So you're going to get it all nice and dissolved. Let it sit for about 10 minutes. And again, this is Red Star Premier Yeast that I use. I bought a 10-pack on Amazon for like 9 bucks. There's a place in Akron, Ohio called the Grape and, Grainy, Gra Grape and Grainery. You can get that really cheap there as well. They have all kinds of different beer making kits, yeast. Obviously, this isn't sponsored. No one sponsors me, but... Um, that is where I've done a lot of my shopping for winemaking stuff before. All in all, I mean, the grape juice was like, I don't know, two, two and a half bucks a piece, three bucks a piece. The yeast, nine bucks, and that's ten packs of it, so you can make a lot with it. The buckets were like ten. I mean, all together, you're not spending a lot of money. You could do five gallons, almost five gallons of wine for like 35 bucks or so worth of material, if that. And you made it at home, and you have yeast left over. Uh, sugar obviously isn't that much, but a lot cheaper, and it's pretty cool because you're making it on your own. And um, you can add different flavors. Sometimes I'll add, uh, usually with the red, I'll add cinnamon, a little bit of cocoa powder. After it's done, I'll dissolve that stuff in, um, and some strawberry flavoring, the just the natural strawberry flavor, flavoring. Another thing that uh, you can do is, uh, you don't have to do this, but... So when you're when you're done after you have primary fermentation and secondary fermentation, like what I was talking about before, when you um, when you clean the sludge off the bottom, you siphon everything out, clean the sludge, pour everything back in, let it set longer. And once it's done fermenting and it's at the desired uh, flavor and dryness that you want, there still be there still could be some uh, residual yeast left over. This wine conditioner has uh, invert sugar in it, so it cannot be consumed by yeast. And it adds a little bit of sweetness to it, but not much, so it could still be pretty dry. I think I paid seven bucks for this whole thing, and it's lasted quite a bit. Um, I just add a little bit, and another great tip, just to avoid blowing tops off your bottles or anything. When fermentation when fermentation happens, you there's pressure that builds up. Now, as time goes on, there's less fermentation, and eventually it just stops. But when you're done, when the wine has the clarity that you want and the flavor that you want, there could still be some yeast left over and obviously still some sugar for the yeast to consume. Um, the best way and the safest way to store this wine, I just put it in the fridge. So if there is any yeast, it'll go dormant. And then usually I'll add some wine conditioner and the yeast can't consume that. It's almost like a sugar preservative at that point. Um, but if you keep the wine in the fridge, it, it can't. It, the yeast isn't going to consume anything because it'll just... It will... Uh, It'll just be dormant if there's any left. But if you do this, if you let it sit long enough, there's not going to be any yeast left anyway, and you don't have to worry. But basically, it takes about three weeks to a month to have real good clarity. But you can get away with two weeks to have this wine ready to drink. And there's nothing dangerous about it. You're not going to get botulism. There's not. It's you know at the very if if you do if you do it wrong, the worst thing that's going to happen is it's either going to be too sweet or it's going to be it's just going to taste bad. But it can't make you sick. Unless you add some other chemical other than what we did here. But all this stuff is just natural ingredients. And it makes really good wine. If you like your wine dry, it will be super dry when you're done. Doing it the way that I showed you. And if you want it sweeter, you can always just add sugar later. Uh, I would just recommend storing it, keeping it in the fridge. If you do add sugar in case there's any yeast left over. About 10 minutes has passed by. We're going to pour the, just pour the yeast directly in. 
You might see some chunks and stuff left over. That's completely normal. Yeah, that ain't gonna hurt anything. And then after you pour that in, stir that stuff in. Again, you don't have to do this, but I, it always works for me. Works better, and I'm not making more. You know, it's just a gallon of wine, so. So I'm not gonna add to the video as far as the next process is just because it takes time. But what you're gonna want to do, and this is the important part, you're gonna seal this up, which I'm gonna do in a second with an airlock, and I'll show you what you need. Once this is sealed up, store it in a cool, dry place, not too cold. I mean, a good 70, 65 to 70 degrees is perfect. Uh, so like a pantry, a closet, just somewhere, and just and, and take a marker and write on the top or on the side, write the date and time that you put it away, and come back a week later. So the airlock will look something like this. It just has water in it um, and a lid that seals on. And then you just let this sit, come back a week later, move this contents into another container temporarily, spray out the bottom because there's going to be thick sludge, just like a purple sludge that builds up at the bottom. And then once that bucket's clean again, pour the wine or the mash back in, and then uh, let it sit for another week or two, and then uh, start looking for clarity. If you got to rinse off the bottom again, just do the same thing till it's clear, and then until you're done. And then you have wine, and uh, if you do it this way, it'll be pretty strong wine.